Hello everybody, gonna try to sneak in one last vlog here before I head out of town for Thanksgiving. And this is for Mockingjay Part 2, the final installment in the Hunger Games movie series. This picks up pretty much where Part 1 left off, where PETA has just been rescued from the capital, but they discovered his mind has been fucked with and he thinks Katniss is evil and must be destroyed at all costs. And the first part of the movie focuses on them trying to unfuck his mind and get him back to normal, or at least as close as possible, and also trying to get the last of the districts under their control so they can pool all their resources together for one final push against the capital to unseat the tyrannical President Snow. And then we get to the invasion itself, which sees Katniss leading a small team into the capital to try to assassinate President Snow, while most of the forces are at the front line distracting them. And similar to the Hunger Games that Katniss has already survived twice, they have to go through a series of traps along the way, and it almost feels like a video game. There's the gun turrets on the wall, and then there's the flamethrowers. Now here's the level where you have to outrun this flood of boiling oil that's coming after you. And then there's the level where you have to dodge these incinerators on the ceiling that are going to burn you to a crisp like that. And then there's the Left 4 Dead level. Really, there's a Left 4 Dead level. There's these... They're not actually zombies. They're... They call them mutts. They're basically these genetically engineered alien zombie things that rush at you and try to gnaw your face off. Now, way back when I was talking about Mockingjay Part 1, I mentioned that splitting this into two movies was a mistake because the book did not have nearly enough material for two movies. And I still stand by that. The first movie had a whole lot of talking and not much else. And the second movie does actually have quite a bit of action, but it has its own issues. It is a better movie than part one, I will give it that. At least it feels like a complete movie. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. But the middle is the part that feels just a little bit too long. Katniss' journey to the presidential palace to assassinate Snow takes several days, and by the time we get to the end, it's really starting to feel like it. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of cool action scenes on the way, and I like the various traps that the Capitol lays for Katniss and her troops. And there's, of course, that delightful weirdness that The Hunger Games is known for, all those crazy hairstyles and outfits, and there's a cat lady. Like, I don't mean like a crazy cat lady, like an old woman with a lot of cats. I mean an actual cat lady, a lady who looks like a cat, like the, what, what were they called in the Elder Scrolls? A Khajiit? She looks like a fucking Khajiit. But it just takes them too damn long to get to the palace, and by the time they get there, it all ends up being kind of pointless. And I don't want to go into too much detail why, because that's going into spoilers, but if you read the book, you probably know what I'm talking about. And because of that, I can't entirely blame the movie for this, because they are staying true to the source material, but, you know... Maybe they should have tweaked the script a bit so they weren't following the book exactly. It probably would have helped. And I get the feeling I probably said something along those lines already in the Part 1 vlog. I apologize if I end up repeating myself here, but it still stands. The third book was easily the weakest of the three, and a little deviation from the source material to improve things probably would have helped here. As far as the love triangle is concerned, I just don't care anymore, and... I, re I mean, I like what they're kind of doing with the PETA character, where he goes batshit insane and Katniss has to kind of bring him back. But the whole, is she going to choose Gail, is she going to choose PETA thing, I don't care. Partly because I've already read the book and I know who she chooses, but even if I hadn't, I still would not care. And there is this really weird scene while they're going through the capital, and both Peta and Gale are part of Katniss's group, because of course they are, and one night while they're taking shelter, they have a surprisingly civil conversation about who they think Katniss is going to choose between the two of them, and it was at least refreshing in that regard to not see them at each other's throats like you would expect in this kind of a story, but... Is it really worth having this conversation now while you're in the middle of a fucking war zone and there's not even any guarantee that both of you are going to make it out of this alive? Several members of your troop have already died at this point. Like, wait until the war is over and you know you're going to survive this thing. Then you can figure this shit out. Time and place, gentlemen. Time and place.
I will say the ending of this movie was pretty cool and very well done. Because I've read the book, I knew how it was going to go down, but still, they did handle it very well. Now, much like Mockingjay Part 1, even though the movie has its flaws, what really sells it are the performances. Jennifer Lawrence and Josh Hutcherson do a great job as always. Uh, I really like the scenes with Donald Sutherland as President Snow. It's always neat to see those because the book was told entirely from Katniss's point of view, and now we actually get to see part of the story from the point of view of President Snow, and it's a lot of interesting stuff going on there, and his performance is outstanding. Jenna Malone is finally back as Joanna Mason, and still as weird as she always was. Love seeing her on screen. Julianne Moore is back as President Coyne, and she does a great job of making you wonder if she's really the better alternative to President Snow. At best, she may just be the lesser of two evils, and, well, possibly not even the lesser. Who knows? And of course, I gotta mention Philip Seymour Hoffman, since I guess this will end up being his final movie. And he's not in a whole lot of it. In fact, there were a couple of scenes where they clearly digitally inserted him using either a body double or some stock footage, which is perfectly understandable given the circumstances, but it was nice to see him one last time, and his performance was solid as always for what little there was of it. In the end, it's a decent movie, probably about as good as it could have been, definitely better than part one, but I still think Catching Fire was the high point of the series. And if you're a fan of The Hunger Games, it's definitely still worth seeing, at least as a matinee. And that does it for Mockingjay Part 2 and for The Hunger Games series. So until next time, happy Thanksgiving, and take care.